The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. Yes, as I pause there, that's sort of an unusual approach to this sort of situation. Because we're going to talk about birthrights and we're going to talk about how this fits together and how the building of the ancient faith of the Hebrews, which leads to who we call the Jews today, uh, when her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterwards, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. Now, so one of them's a, a, a red and a kind of a kind of a woolly kid. I I don't know how to, I, it just it just seems like an odd way to describe a, a newborn baby as being red. Uh, I've seen I've seen at least two newborns and the, they're all red. The ones I've seen. So, anyway, when the boys grew up, Esau was a skilled hunter, a man of the field. So we have Esau. He's, he's the guy that knows how to use the sling, a spear, a javelin, and the, uh, probably, he doesn't say anything about bows, but he probably can shoot a bow. Uh, so, here we go. He may, I don't know, it doesn't say anything about swords, so it doesn't mean he's a warrior. Uh, but here we go. Isaac, uh, Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Maybe he was a manager of how the sheep were taken care of. Uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's not very much of a description. It does say that Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Now we all know that in a, in a dysfunctional family, moms and dads and brothers and sisters, they all seem to have favorites. They juggle this, their passions and their feelings and their desires, and there's all sorts of struggles. Uh, we might even call it office politics. <coughs> How many of you have heard? None of us work in office and such. Do any of us work in... We don't, I don't, oh, you have... But you're a librarian. You work, in, you work with the books. And we're proud of you. Uh, actually, I look out across here and the, the, the vast majority of us are retired. Except for these guys, they all, they're all kids. Oh, and Teresa's still, you're, you're still building part of Sell me your birthright. 
A birthright in that day meant that you would receive a double portion of the initial setup of, of the inheritance when the father passed away. That would have been, in this case, Isaac. So, that's really an expensive meal in this situation. Because the birthright also includes the divine blessing from God. Because Isaac had that, just like Abraham had it, that divine blessing from God. So, Esau said, I'm about to die of what, what use is the birthright to me? Esau doesn't take his birthright very seriously. And it may be that there was only a couple hundred sheep out in the pasture at this point. He wasn't really worried about it, the inheritance. Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his, birth, sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. You know, I ask the Lord to bless the reading of his word there so that we can kind of imagine in our own minds what's going on. Yeah, you have Abraham and Sarah. They had enough problems. Oh my goodness. And we studied them a few weeks back. So here we are with Isaac, who has some problems. And there's no indication that he's communicating very much with Ishmael, his older brother. So, Isaac is a son of promise. And now he has two sons. Esau, firstborn, Jacob, the second child, second twin. Esau sells his birthright for a bowl of soup and a loaf of bread. Uh, the value of a birthright, I've mentioned that. And as we dwell on what's going on here, we, we, we discover that Jacob has acquired the birthright. Now, there was nothing in writing that we're aware of at this point. Does Rebecca know about this? Yes. <coughs> Is Rebecca coaching Jacob? I believe so. And a little later on in the development of this family struggle, which takes a, takes a lot of study, this is the kind of thing that you finish up uh, at a round table uh, where you have where you have coffee and donuts and cheesecake. Listen, I'm getting hungry, so I got to stop. <laughs> uh, we know today, upon looking at this, that what a struggle between the two brothers, and there's no mention of other children, none whatsoever. So. It was a very close family. Uh, we, we look around as being a dysfunctional family all the time. We hear of kids that don't want to grow up. We hear about divorce in our own family and in people around us. We hear about horrible accidents where someone's left by themselves to raise children. Uh, we know of the grandparents. That are, that are raising children. We hear about these things all the time. And I have a son who talks about family relations, and he says it like this. When I ask him a question about a family member, uh, he says, oh, well, we love them, but we're not close. And lots of times, we have family cousins brothers and sisters even, that we communicate with. It's easy to send a text message, send a call them on the phone, send them an email. Uh, I communicate with two of my granddaughters on a Zoom call. And our one daughter, we, we do Zoom calls together. Now I have another granddaughter that's super busy, so all I ever do is just drop her a note. And yes, when I drop the granddaughters a note, I drop all three of them a note at the same time. Yes, I fold up a crisp new twenty dollar bill and put it in every note. And how many of you think I hear from them immediately when they open that card? 
No, I never hear from her. I just have to hope it gets there. I quit sending checks. You know why? They never catch me. I know when I was a child, when Grandma sent me a check, within, within, before the envelope sent the trash can, I'm at the bank cashing that check. Different times. So, many of us are well aware that dysfunctional family is everywhere. It's, it's a part of our, it's a part of the faith. Family members don't agree. We can study the book of Revelation and come up with lots of family, dysfunctional family. We know that they're all around us. You see, as I, I'm going to bring this up to an end right now. So, transitioning to today, love your family. Jesus told us to love our neighbors. He just took it for granted that we were going to love our family. He didn't think he had to remind us to love our family. Well, I'm reminding you that our family is our neighbors also. So love your family. Love your neighbors. Remember what Jesus said about the great, great commandment. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and your soul. Second slide, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your family. And be as, be as careful over your family relationships as you are over your own health needs and the health needs of people around you and for those that you care about within the community. And another way of saying you care about is you demonstrate love. How do you demonstrate love? Uh, well, for, for me, you can make a, you can make a pot. I want, I want to remind everybody like I've reminded you for years. I only like two kinds of pot. Hot and cold. <laughs> Luke, lukewarm. No, 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 no. Either warm it up or have it chill. I'm, I'm good. God's creation belongs to us all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we've studied about it. Jacob and Esau. We understand Esau's thinking. He was hungry. We're all hungry. Lord, let us be ever vigilant in loving our family, communicating with our family. And Lord, thank you that we have a church family too. We are all brothers and sisters together in the service of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And God's people all said together, Amen. We're going to sing. Uh, this is a, I don't, this is a fun one. I'm not real familiar with it. It's 2107 in the black paperback camera. 2107. Wade in the water. Yes, and some instruction. We're going to do the chorus. We're all going to do verse one together. It says leader. We're all going to do it together. And then the chorus. Their capital saxes are joining the worship team. So let's have fun. <laughs>
Enjoy.